sixth graders, um, how you doing? I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, this is going to be your video for Monday, April 27th. And um, we had this long weekend, so uh, your last assignment was on Wednesday, and you guys were looking at box plots, or box and whisker plots. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go back over that. So I'm gonna give you the, the answers to questions four, five, and six, and that's what I assigned last time. And so I'm gonna give you those answers, and then we are going to keep working in this section today. We're gonna do a little more work with it. So what I'd like for you to do is to get out your homework, get out your page. That would be page 325. It would be great to have your book open too. I'm gonna give you on the whiteboard here what your box plot should look like. So remember, we talked last video about how to make one of these. We are, we're calling it either a box and whisker or we're calling it a box plot. Um, this, is that, this is that plot that has five key values. Okay, so we talked about uh, the plot, what it looks like. We talked about how to find those five key values. And then we talked about how to graph those onto a number line. So. I wanna show you how you should have done four and five. I'll give you the five key values for number six. That's what they were asking for. Then we're gonna talk about a few more problems in that section. So if you just can keep your books open to 325, we'll be on that page here for a little bit. Okay, so have your paper out and have it ready to go and uh, let's just get started on that. Okay, the first thing that um, we talked about is that we've gotta gather our data. So the data that they have given us and the first thing we do with it is we order it. We've been doing this a lot. We have to order our data for a median. So we're getting used to this, taking the data and ordering it. Okay, on number four, it talked about the cost of a haircut in dollars at a local hair salon. Okay, then it gave us some different costs of, of haircuts. Now, here's the data, and it wanted us to tell them how many observations. And I think that is partly because they don't want you to miss one of those. Because if you miss uh, one of the data pieces, then your, your whole uh, box plot's gonna be off. So uh, here we go, let's order that data, first of all. And we counted it up in the book and there should have been nine pieces of data. So uh, here we go, this is the order that you should have had it in. There was a haircut for 14, 26, 28, 35, 40, 42, 45, 55, and 60. Okay, so the cost of haircuts range from 14 to 60. So we could just even find the range here and subtract 60 from, uh, take 14 from 60 and find the range for, for haircuts um, and how much they cost. Now, we have it, so let's make sure we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good, we don't wanna miss any piece of the data. Now, we're gonna find our five key values from, from our data. Least, greatest. Okay, those are always super easy. Then, we needed to find the median. Now, remember, there's nine pieces, that's odd, so there should be a perfect middle. One, two, three, four, perfect middle. One, two, three, four. Okay, so here's our lower quartile numbers, here's our upper quartile. Now, we have our, our least, our median, and our greatest. Now we need our lower quartile. Okay, so we're gonna take it from these numbers. Well, there's four of them, so there's not a perfect middle, so we're gonna have to put it right here for the lower quartile. Well, what falls between 26 and 28? Well, that would be 27. That was a nice, easy one to find. Okay, here's our upper quartile, there's four. Okay, we need to put it right here, what falls between 45 and 55, well that would be 50. Okay, so there's our upper quartile. So now we've found our five key um, values. Okay, we're gonna take our five key values now and we will need to graph them. So let's put them on a graph. Now we have to ask ourselves, we're going from 14 to 60. So what would make sense for graphing this? And I would say counting by tens. So you could go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay, you could put your little hashes. So we have 12, oops, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 40, 
44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60. Okay, there we go. I mean, you could have gone to 70, I guess, and gone a little bit above it, um, but we don't really need that, but if you choose to prefer to do 60, you can do 70. Okay, so now, here we go. Let's graph it. So let's graph our, our key values. So 10, 12, 14, so let's go 14. 20, 22, 24, 26, so we're gonna fall between 26 and 28. There's our 27, 40, uh, oops, 50, 60. Okay, now <clears throat> we have our five, one, two, three, four, five, five key values. Now we're gonna box. And then we'll do our wrist fitting. Okay, some people in the past have liked to make that look like a kitty. Uh, Always fun. Okay, so here we go, box and whisker. Now, we should always say what we're doing. So this up here above it, um, cost of hair cuts, um, you know, at different salons. Okay, so that's what we were analyzing. And down below, we gotta tell them what we're talking about. And this is the cost in dollars. Okay, this would be money. Okay, so the cost in dollars. Okay, so there we go. Cost of haircuts at different salons. Now we could go, if we didn't have all the data and this is all we had, we could find our five uh, key values. We could go, oh, that's uh, 14. So that's 10, 12, 14. Oh, that was, the, okay, the lowest was a 14. Then we could go, okay, the lowest quartile was a 27 by counting. 40 was our median, 50 was our upper quartile, 60 was our greatest. So, oh wow, the, the most expensive haircut was a $60 haircut. The least was a 14. So we could read that without having all the data. Now remember, with, with a box plot or box and whisker, they're counting this as a fourth of the data. This is a fourth of the data. This would be about, about a fourth of the data, and this would be a fourth. Creating all the data here will be one whole set of data. So each from dot to dot, thinking, okay, that's about a fourth, that's about a fourth, that's about a fourth. Well, so from this dot to this dot, that would be one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. That's three fourths of the data. That's what they're saying on this. Okay, so that's just the way we're, we're looking at this and reading this. All right, I'm gonna erase this so we can do our next one. Okay, so that was number four. So you needed to tell how many observations, there were nine, and then you needed to, um, create the create the box plot. Okay, let's go to number five. Number five, uh, this is something that uh, definitely is, uh, I think about number of items in, in the grocery cart. Okay, now there were a few more data items this time. Um, I counted up 14, so we always wanna double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 14 pieces of data. So now we have to get them in order. Um, so let's do that. I missed, you guys helping me on this. Your eyes are so good. Um, you guys do this so fast in class when I've done this with, with kids. You guys are good at this stuff. So here we go. Um, here's the order though. Let's do that. Five, nine, nine came twice. So it was two, two carts they observed each had nine items. Okay, there was a 10, a 12, an 18, a 26, a 35, 235, uh, a 38, a 41, a 49, a 50, and a 56. Okay, that'd be me right now. I'm over here shopping these days. Okay, so now we need to make sure we have 14 um, data items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, there's our 14 data items. Okay, now, <clears throat> even numbers, so we're not gonna have a perfect middle, just keep that in mind. Okay, so we have our least, we have our greatest, there's our two. Now, let's go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we don't have a perfect middle, but we know this is the lower quartile, data upper quartile. Okay, so now we have to find out what would fall between 26 and 35. Remember, if you can't think of it, it's, it's okay. Just add those two together and divide by two, cut it in half. That would be 30.5. Okay, so there's our median. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, odd number. So we have a perfect middle. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
Okay, there's our break, there's our meeting up there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so now we have our five pieces of data that we need, our five key values. Okay, so let's go and let's graph that. Now, graphing this, we're going from a five to a 66. I would say I would probably just count by um, fives. So five, well, let's get a little more space. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, use the whiteboard, 50, oh, looks like that, 60. Okay, now you, some of you are very meticulous and you like to put your little hash marks in, um, up to you, I'm just gonna leave it like that. But now let's go ahead and say what we're doing here. So this is, um, this was, uh, what, what are we doing? Number of items in a grocery store. So, no, well, in a cart, right? Number of items in grocery cart. So number of items, in a grocery cart, and this is the number of the items. Okay, so now here we go. Put our five key values, a five, so we'll go right above the five, a 10, that's us, my community, a 10. Okay, now we gotta shoot over here to a 30.5, so that's just barely over 30, because it's 30 and a, and a little half, so barely over 30. Okay, let's go over to 41, 40, 41 would be just past 40, and 56, so 55 and just past 55, 56. Okay, so now let's box it. And let's get our list in. Okay, so there we go. Um, <clears throat> okay, just looking at, I mean, we have to read these again. This is just helping us see the dispersion of data and how data is going from a least to a greatest and how it is dispersed amongst these, these numbers. Okay, so that's what those two look like. Now on number uh, six, you were supposed to just come up with the five different um, key values. So let me read those to you so you have those and then you can see if you did those correctly. So after you ordered your data, this is what you should have come up with for your five key values. 8.5, 11.4, 16.4, 18.9, and 19.1. Okay, so there's your five key values uh, that you should have come up with for number, number six. Okay, now, uh, even if you wanna stay on your same paper because we're gonna keep going, or if you're running out of room, you can always grab another piece. But we are gonna talk about number seven, and then um, I'm gonna have you do some problems, and I'm gonna explain those a little bit so you'll know what you're working on here then for, for your work after you watch the video. Okay, so on number seven, it says the box and whisker plot represents the number of ice cream flavors at 15 different creameries. Okay, so now we're looking at a box and whisker this time. We're not creating one, we're looking at one. So it has the ice cream flavors, Okay, that's what it's uh, labeled. Down below, it's saying it's the number of flavors. Okay, now by looking at that, at that box and whisker, we can look and see a, a least value, the least, we can see the greatest, we can see the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile. Okay, now looking at that, that box and whisker, let's go to A. It says, what fraction of the creameries have at least 25 flavors? So that would be 25 or more. What fraction? Well, 25 is the lower quartile dot. So then we gotta go to the median and the upper quartile and the greatest value. Well, to go from the rest of those dots, we would say, oh, about three fourths. So what fraction of the creameries have at least 25 flavors? Well, about three fourths because, because all the dots are on the other side. So we were, we were right here, so we'd go to this one, this one, and this one. So that'd be one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Well, that's about three fourths have, have at least 25 flavors. Okay, let's go to B. What is the unit of measurement for this set of data? Well, what are they measuring? Go up and look at their titles. What did, what did they title it? What are they looking at? Well, they're measuring number of flavors at an ice cream, at an ice cream shop, at these different shops they visited. 
So they are measuring number of flavors. Okay, so that would be part B. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to number eight, and I want you to try that one on your own. So you're gonna read the, the instructions there for number eight, and you're gonna look at letter A and letter B, and you're gonna answer that on your own. Now, I want you to pause the video and try it, and then I'm gonna give you the answers here in a minute, and then just see if you were right, see if you understood this. And then I'll assign a couple prongs and, and I'll give those to you um, tomorrow, the answers to those. Okay, so pause the video, do number eight, and then come back on and see if you got them. Okay, here we go. We're gonna pretend we paused. Now, on number eight, it says the box and whisker plot represents the cost of a large cheese pizza at 12 different pizzerias. Okay, look how they've titled it, cost of large pizza. What are they measuring? Dollars, we see that below. Now we can find the five key values. We can see that the least was eight, then the, the lower quartile was 10, and then the median was $10.50, because it's in between 10 and $11. Then the upper quartile was $14.50, and then the greatest, the, the, the greatest value was 16. Okay, so we see our numbers there. Well, letter A says, what fraction of the pizzerias charge between 14.50 and 16? Okay, so that'd be the upper quartile and the greatest value. Well, what fraction? That would be from dot to dot, that's about a fourth. So we'd say a fourth for, for looking for a fraction there. Okay, that'd be A, hopefully you got that one right, you did that correctly. That would be one fourth you should have put down. Now let's go to B. What fraction of the pizzerias charge less than 10.50? Okay, so we gotta go up to our 1050. Well, that was the median. Now, going less, we have to go all the way back down. Well, there's two dots there. So there, there's two spaces, so that would be about one half charge less than uh, 1050. So you should have had one half. See if you had that, hopefully you did, and you got that one right. Okay, now, here's your assignment for today. You are going to be working on numbers nine, and 11 from page 326. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little hint and tell you a couple things I need you to do for number nine so you don't miss this. On number nine, you are looking at the heights for the girls and the heights for boys. There are 11 girls, so you should have 11 pieces of data, and there are nine boys, so you should have nine pieces of data for boys. Now, you're looking, at, looking for heights, and this will be in inches. So there's our information. Now, letter A says, construct a box and whisker plot to represent the heights of the boys. So you're gonna do the boys. Then above that, so using the same number line. So you're gonna put them on the same number line. You're gonna have the boys' height, and then you're gonna have the girls' height. So we can see them right by each other, right above each other. So on the same number line, construct a box and whisker plot to represent the heights of the girls. So this is gonna be kind of nifty because you're gonna see it. You're gonna just see them right on top of each other. You're gonna see how they kind of, they, where, the, where they're situated on that number line. You kind of be able to compare them. Okay, so that's letter A. Letter B, how do the two data sets compare? So you're just gonna look at that and you're just gonna see, okay, talk about it. Say, okay, you know, where's the lower quartile for the boys? Where's the lower quartile for the girls? Where does that median fall for those two? Okay, so you're just gonna you're just gonna observe those box and whiskers and make some observations about what you see there between those two. Okay, so that's number nine, and you're gonna work on that. Then you're gonna skip and you're gonna do number eleven. Number eleven says the number of words per minute that students can type at the end of the first semester are shown in the dot plot. Okay, you're looking at a dot plot. We've done one of those. Now you will letter A. How many observations? First of all, count them up. Well, every dot, remember, is an observation. So every time you see a dot, that's one observation. Then you see another dot, that's two observations. How many dots do you see? So first of all, figure that out. That way you don't miss any of those uh, data pieces. Then construct a box and whisker plot to represent the data. Okay, so just to get you started on that, if I see a dot above 54, that's one of my pieces of data. So that would be my first one, 54. 
Okay, then after that, okay, where's my de next dot? Oh, it's on a 56. So that would be my next piece of data, a 56. Okay, then I'm gonna go, well, where do I see another dot? I see a dot between 58 and 60, and there's actually two dots. So I would need to put down 59, 59, because there's two dots above the 59, because that falls between 58 and 60. Okay, so and go, go, keep going. Every time you see a dot, put that number down. Okay, so that's, that's how you're gonna start setting up your data. And then you're gonna construct your box and whisker. Um, that's the next part. Um, and, then, and then obviously graph it and put it, on a, put it on a graph there that will make sense with these numbers. Okay, so you're gonna do number nine and you're gonna do number 11. Then uh, down below, number 14, is a, a multiple choice, so I'd like you just to look at that and, and do number 14. Okay, so that's gonna be your work to do today after you get done watching this and, you're, and you've wrapped it up. Uh, so be working on those and then, and then we'll talk about those on the next video and make sure you've done them correctly and we'll look to see, okay, did we, did we get all the data? Did we find those five key values and did we graph them correctly? All right. Uh, Hopefully you've done well in this and you're feeling good about it. Um, I, and this will just give us a little more practice and we'll just feel like we've got this down. So have a great rest of the day and, um, and we'll uh, just see you again and see you on Zoom hopefully later. Uh, if not, tomorrow for Tuesday's uh, Bible check-in. I will look forward to seeing all of you. Okay, talk to you later, bye-bye.